Let's go with the message today. The title of my message today, say it with me, is Checking Balance. Checking Balance. And play on words this morning. How much is enough? How much? Well, a little bit more. A little bit more would be nice. How much is enough? I counseled a couple this week, and the young man is from, he just graduated the Naval Academy. So proud of him. He's going to go in now as an as a, uh, officer in the Marines. And I'm marrying him in two weeks, uh, right here in Englewood. Amen? And we're excited about it. And I was counseling him as I was talking to him. I told him the number one problem in, in marriage, number one, is not infidelity. It's money. Money. You'll fight more about money. You'll have more problems over money than any other subject. You better get a handle on your money, how you think about money. I would say the number one reason churches split and fight is over money. You hear me? Because the church is a family. Bicker and fight. That's why at Fellowship Church, we do things debt free. Amen. I'm not going to have some stress attack. I'm already stressed out enough. But worrying about some bank having a note over us and holding our mortgage. It could come out here and take our building. You hear me? We'll stay at the high school. That was our plan. We'll stay right there until we can get her done. And God blessed us. And that's our thinking. Why is it our thinking? Well, if it's the number one thing that causes problems in family, and I believe the number one thing that causes problems in church, why wouldn't I try to deal with that problem? Yes or no? Amen? And guys, this is a problem. Balance and money and how to, how to have checking balance and how to keep yourself straight. You might say, I don't come to church much. Great. You're here today. You're going to learn. How about that? You're going to learn something. Okay? This could be on CNBC right here. What we're fixing to talk about. It'll help you. Good stuff. I don't do it all the time, but we're going to do it today. And by the way, we're going to do it different than they hear the TV preachers do it. Okay? Because so much of what they say is bull. And it's not Bible. So let's see what the Bible says. Let's see what the Bible says today. Jesus talked about money more than any other subject. More than any other subject, he talked about money other than his father's kingdom. Now, Jesus didn't talk about money because it was he loved it. No. He talked about it because we need help. We need help. We need to learn. He spent his time on this subject. Keep looking. 11 out of Jesus' 39 parables deal with money. That's crazy, isn't it? You mean almost a third of his parables deal with the subject of money. Just in the Gospel of Luke, one out of every seven verses deals with money. Just in that one book. Crazy. Money. Keep looking. Because Jesus spoke so much about money, watch it. Many preachers and teachers have twisted and warped his teaching. Now don't, don't lose that. Because Jesus spoke so much about money, it's easy for his words to be twisted. Well, Jesus said it, you know, so here, bless God, you need to give it a bit. You understand know what I'm saying, okay? You throw Jesus behind it. Well, okay, I must do it then. Well, let's, let's look and see what he said, okay? Keep looking. Many of them use it to justify their own what? Wealth and their what? Prosperity doctrines. If you lived on this planet about 50 years ago, 70 years ago, there was no such thing as a prosperity doctrine. That bothers me. I like history. I like history books. I like old books about old preachers and things. I don't read a lot of them anymore, but I like to be able to go back. And, and see what other people talked about. And it's amazing. So much of what we hear in the church today. But it's a new day. And God's speaking a new word. But I ain't so sure about all that. I like his old word. Amen. I think our problem is not the new word. It's we don't read the old word. You hear me? Yes or no? And we get tired of the old word. Because the old word's old. And it's all wore out. Well, that's bull too. Okay? Come on. Alright? So... So much of what we hear today, even coming from the church, is twisted. And it's not true. So let's talk about it. Because 
It's really important. Families are at stake here. The church's future is at stake here. We ought to try to get it right. So let's hold the phone on this subject for just a moment. Keep looking. Jesus' teaching, can you say this with me? Jesus' teaching was actually the opposite of what most prosperity preachers teach in the church today. How wrong can you get it being the opposite? But it's because the church has a lack of knowledge. We're dumbed down. And not just the church, society in general. It's amazing. People back in the 1800s, all they had was a, was a lamp. Limited books. But their vocabulary was like ten times ours. Do you hear me? Yes or no? We're getting dumber and dumber and dumber. Church is following suit. What happens in the world? You know, in California it comes this way. Well, what happens in the world comes in the church. And we're no better off here. Keep looking. So, we want some balancing facts today. We're talking about money. Let's keep looking. So, let's look at some balancing facts. When you're talking about money and the scriptures and getting our thinking straight, Jesus never taught that wealth and prosperity was something to be desired. He never taught that. He never taught that. Can you say never? He never taught that. So if some preacher you hear is teaching that, well, you can applaud him. He's just different than Jesus. If that's what you want. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Not your favorite preacher. Amen. Yes or no? Keep, your, keep yourself straight here. Some balancing facts. Jesus consistently taught not, not, he consistently taught not to be preoccupied with money and wealth. Not to be. Not to be. So not only did he not teach the prosperity stuff at all, he taught you shouldn't be preoccupied with money, 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 wealth, wealth, wealth. Why am I talking about this today? We're out of balance. We need to talk about it. Amen? It'll help us. And you'll see, it gets practical, but we're just staying with this right now. Jesus consistently taught and challenged his followers. He consistently taught and challenged his followers to give money, to give money, to give money, or material support to people in need. He consistently taught that. To do what with your money? To do what with it? That's what he told us to do. Amen? To people in need. Listen, if they don't need it, why are you giving it to them? Say, that's pretty good reason right there, isn't it? Say, I'm really old-fashioned. I still think if you're able to work, you ought to get a job. I just really believe that. I'm a nut, ain't I? Sort of crazy. Jesus never taught that it was important to have much money for yourself. He never taught that. You need money. You need to have money for yourself. You need to have a lot of money for yourself. He never taught that. He taught really to have money was not for yourself, but so you could help people. Boy, we've drifted, haven't we? Yes or no? Have we drifted? Yes or no? It sounds like I'm from the dark ages here. Well, this is actually before the dark ages. Come on. Here we go. Keep looking. So that's some balancing facts. And what I just read you on that screen is the what? Truth. You can't argue with it. Go all week, a month, whatever. Look at your Bible. Look at Jesus' words. You'll come back and go, well, look at that. I guess he was right. Yeah, that's the truth. This is what he taught. This is what Jesus taught. And this is what we should what? I want to think like Jesus. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm made in his image and his likeness. I want to think like he thinks. I want his thinking to be my thinking. Okay? So how can, I, how can I balance myself on the subject of money? So some facts that we need to look at. Number one, say that with me. Money is not neutral. Before we start, how many ever got in a fight over some money? Can I see your hand? How many ever hit somebody in the head or in the mouth over some money? Can I see your hand? If there's anybody in the building, there's one right over here. Good. Proud of you, son. There you go. 
All right, all right. How many of you ever had a relationship? It just broke up bad over money. Let me see some hands. It'll kill a relationship. Amen. How many ever had problems with your youngins and your kids because of money? Let me see some. Look at that. How many ever in a church somewhere that had some problems with the money? Let me see your hand. Woo! Y'all need some therapy. Amen. We got several therapists in the building today, by the way. We do. It's the truth. Money is not neutral. That's number one. Money's not neutral. If you go after money, money's going to go after you. Don't be surprised if you get snake bit. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. To follow the Lord, His Word, to want to be like Him, to do the right thing. Oh my goodness. To follow Him. Man, listen, with contentment, man, Lord, to have you is enough. Amen. Man, when I got you, I got the pearl of greatest price. I got heaven. I got the Holy Spirit, the living God. I've got the Word of God. I know it takes money down here. to. I get that. But be content. Oh, man. Amen. Don't put money above that. For we brought nothing into this world. I've done a lot of funerals. I'm going to tell you something right now. Newsflash. You ain't taking a thing with you. Somebody else is going to make up your face and put the clothes on you. You understand? And they're probably going to pull the mess off your hands. And who knows where that's going to go. Your rings and all that stuff. Who, I don't know. I'm just saying. You have zero to do with it. If you want something done, you better write it down and put a trustworthy person in, in charge of it if it gets done. Amen? Come on. But if I was you, I wouldn't worry about it. As far as I'm concerned, I ain't worried about it. Dress me in whatever. I could care less. Amen? One request. Put a wig on me. No, I'm sorry. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> having food and raiment, having food and clothes, let us be what? But see, we grow up in the greatest country on the face of the earth. He agrees. <laughs> Amen. And so we become selfish and we become so secure and so safe and so this and so that. And selfish is what we are. The Bible says they that will be rich fall into what? How many would just say with an upward hand, I'm, I'm just talking, we were just family, I'm not trying to embarrass you. How many would say, man, I went after riches and it sort of bit me, it screwed me up a little bit. Can I see some hands there? Look at that, it, it got me, man, it just got me. You'll fall into a snare, many foolish and hurtful lusts, and, and, and many will drown, drown, drown. Drown. How many's ever felt like you're drowning in debt? How many ever? Isn't that a, a phrase we use? Wonder where drowning in debt came from. It might have come from the Bible. Doesn't it say that right there? Not a good thing. Keep looking. Push. Thanks. The love of money is the what? Root of all evil, which some coveted after, coveting money, have erred from the faith. Aired from the faith. And that's not just people out of church. That's people in church. That's people preaching at the churches. They've gone after money and they've erred from the gospel of Christ and preaching the good news and letting that be what we're about. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. He rose from the dead. That's the church's message. Y'all know that, don't you? We're not to come to church and hear. I mean, I like to talk practically when, you, when I preach and want to help you in your life. But at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. You get that? Yes or no? It's about his death. It's about his burial. It's about his resurrection. Without him, you're going to a devil's hell. That's horrible. He doesn't want you to go there. That should be the church's message. Amen? But you'll watch a lot of churches and you'll hear it. And it's money, 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 money. Let's do another quick test. How many got burned out of church? Just burned out of it, turned off of it because of money. Let me see your hands. That is a crazy hands number right there. That's a lot. And I struggle with that. When we're building this building, I never want to be somebody like, all he wants to do is my money, my money. I, my name ain't on this building. And guess whose else's name ain't on it? Yours. Amen? Come on. No. I don't own anything here. You understand that? Yes or no? Neither do you. How about that? Isn't it grounds level at Fellowship Church, ain't it? Say, those offices we just bought, my name ain't on that deed. 
I'm the steward right now. I'm the steward. Somebody's got to be in charge, right? But my name ain't on it. No. It's about him. Y'all hear me or not? This is a good message for me to hear today, for Gary Clark to hear this message. I need to hear this today. The church, we need to hear it. Feed the flock of God. That's what the Bible says. Feed the flock of God. <laughs> Amen. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy money. Nobody should be in ministry for the money. Yes or no? Period. But of a ready mind, we're to teach the word, we're to teach, we're to teach truth, we're to love people, we're to love Jesus. That what, that's what we're supposed to be about. Amen? That's what we are about. So money's not neutral. Money is basically evil. Now, why do I say that? Now, I'm not just down on money. You'll see there's going to be positive. Just hang in there. Why do I say it's basically evil? Here's why. Because money at its very nature defiles those who love it. Okay, let me give you an example. If I love my wife, it won't defile me. If I love my children, that won't defile me. These are good things to love, yes or no? So, but if you love money, you will be defiled by it. The love of money will destroy you. Are you hearing me? And many of you, of you can testify that it's happened in your own life. We see it all the time. We see people, they're rich, they're famous, they're the most miserable people on the planet. Say, their life's one big gossip column or page or whatever, tabloid. You can have the crap. Excuse me. Amen. Say, they're crazy problems. You kidding me? It'll defile you. You better be careful. And it will kill a family. It'll kill a marriage. I'm telling you. Keep looking. You can love a lot of things and it won't defile you. But if you love money, it will. You cool? How many are feeling like you just want to go quit your job right now? <laughs> Woo! I heard it church today. Money's bad, so I quit. Well, hang on a minute. Don't, don't be too rash in your thinking here. Come on. Here we go. Keep pushing me, buddy. Come on. Come on, here we go. We're easily compromised and corrupted by money. That's the point. We're just rolling here. So it's very important to check your what? To check your balance. We know we need money. We know it takes money to operate. Of course it does. But the whole message today is checking balance. Check your balance. Check your balance on the subject of money. That's what we're doing today. See that thing moving like that? There you go. There you go. There you go, buddy. Jesus speaking. Don't lay up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Well, right there, that's what we do. That's what we do. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. How many ever had something and it rusted? Can I see your hand? Well, look at that. The Bible's true after all. Where thieves break through and steal. How many ever had a thief steal some of your mess? Let me see your hand. Well, look at that. I don't believe the Bible. The Bible ain't true. What Bible are you reading? But lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do, break, do not break through and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That's Jesus talking. This was all, this is what Jesus talked about all the time. All right, so where your treasure, that's where your what's going to be. Now, your heart's not this pumping thing. The heart is your passion. Your passion, what drives you, your will, your emotions. So wherever you lay up your treasures, where your emotions are going to run. That's where you're going to, that's what you're going to be attracted to. That's what you're going to go after. The light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, if your eye is evil, your whole body shall be full of what? Darkness. If therefore the light that's in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. What's his whole point? His whole talk is about you cannot serve God 
and money. Did you hear that? He's basically saying, let God be the light of your eye. If you put money as the, as the light of your eye, you're going to have a very dark future. Others might call it bright because they're looking at your portfolio and your balance. But really the difference you could have made on this planet for him is not going to happen. Big, big, big deal. Money. Follow the money. And if you don't like this message, it's my message. So, I mean, you probably don't like me right now. Follow the money. The way I use my, this is a statement I came up with years ago. The way I use my money, the way I view my money is the doctrinal statement of the faith I say I possess. Now, that's a crazy statement. Look at it just again. The way I view my money is the doctrinal statement of the faith that I say I possess. How I look at my money, how I see my money, how I see what money is for, how I give my money, how I use that money, really is. We can say, oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in, in all the books in the Bible. I believe in this and I believe in that. Well, those are just words. How you use your money. Money is life. Money, you have to have money to do the things you do in life. There's no, better, there's no better thing to check yourself on how you really are as a person than the way you view money. You have to have money to do everything. How many did something yesterday with some money? Can I see your hand? A little bit of something with some money yesterday. How many last week you did something somewhere, all last week at least once, you did something with some money? But, I, but if I ask you how many read the Bible every day last week, as few of you would. Do you see the difference? Money's the one thing that can really tell us who we are. My attitude and my actions towards money and material things are the true. It's a statement I've said for years. It's the true barometer of my heart. That's why mama told me when I was a young man. I was saved and, you know, but I was just young in the faith. But she looked me dead in the eye and said, you're stingy. Mama would give everything away. But she didn't give everything away. We had plenty. But she just gave a lot away. And the Lord would give her more. Because she is willing to work. Amen. She is willing to do. And the Lord just blessed her. God will bless work. Say that with me. God will bless. And guys, I'm looking at several of you out there that do finances and things like that. I'm not saying, and I'm glad that you do a good job at your finances. I'm glad that you, you check your portfolio and you ought to do stuff like that. That's being wise. That's being wise. But check yourself out. How much do you give? Are you giving? Are you a giver? And don't look at it just in dollars and cents. Look at it percentage wise. You might give more than somebody else, but somebody else gave about all they had. You're hardly giving nothing. Check it out. Amen. And I'm not talking about just giving to the church. I'm talking about helping people and loving people and caring for people. So what really matters? What really matters? We're talking about checking balance. Now, this is where I get into it. I like this. Here we go. This is my part of the sermon. Living with less is best. Now, if you've been by my house that I own there on the highway, you look in my backyard, it's a mess. I got all kinds of boats and mess in there, and I'm trying to get rid of them, okay? Okay. But the good news is I hardly gave anything for any of them, amen? And I just made me one out of one last week that hardly cost me nothing. And that's now my favorite. Amen. But anyway, living with less is best. Here's what you get when you live with less. You have less debt. Yes or no? Amen? Living with less is best because you have less debt. I don't care what somebody tells you. Debt is bad. Can you say that with me? Debt is bad. No, you need debt so you can get you some good credit. You know, the best credit is cash. Amen. That's the best credit on the planet. I need a credit card. I know. I know we're a cashless society. I get all that. But listen, you get enough cash, I guarantee it. They'll be knocking the door down to get you a credit card. All right? I, I tell you that right now. It's no problem. You'll have less stress. How many stressed out in your life before over money? Let me see your hands. How many really stressed out before in life over money? 
There you go. You know what I'm talking about. You'll have less struggle. How many struggled because you, you, you had problems with money? I mean, I was struggling, man. I was struggling. This is hitting on every... I'd ask on this a subject. If I was preaching another subject today, I wouldn't get near the hands. This hits every one of us, doesn't it, today? So, how can I live with less? How can I live with less? If less is best, how can I live with less? How can I live with less? I'm just trying to throw some balance at you today. Here's one. Coupons. How many coupons? Can I see your hands? Amen. Look at that. Just poor people coupon. Bull. You kidding me? You ever thought that maybe some of those folks just got a little, got a little extra because they coupon? Kim, are you in the building? Good. She ain't here. I've said to you before, when I met Kim and we started dating, she had nothing. Is that right, Miss Jenny? She still don't have much because she had nothing. So why does she need a lot now? <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. But, but she didn't have much anything. Period. Food stamps. She worked. She had a job, but it wasn't enough. It's hard. And I'm out with her on a date. I don't even know her hardly. She's very shy. Still is. But she said to me in a little sheepish voice and head down and almost ashamed, she looked at me and she said, I coupon. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, that's sexy. <laughs> that turns me on right there. Hey, right now, you just rung my bell. <laughs> coupon, man. We were at Longhorn the other night. A Longhorn Steakhouse. This is a new world with this phone. You need to get you a phone what you need. You people, I don't want no phone. You need to get you a phone with the internet. I was at Longhorn the other night. Check that Longhorn. Check that thing. Kim's like, what? Check the phones. <laughs> See if there's anything free tonight or any deals. Oh, it's over now. It ended, it ended Friday night. Sorry. Free dessert. Did it say free? Free dessert. I got a dessert that was $9.95. Thing was huge. How many have ever had that six chocolate thing with all that ice cream at the Longhorn? You ought to go get one in a minute. It's a great. We didn't pay one red cent. We had two entrees and we got it for free. I think I'd be a fool if I didn't do that. What do you think? I ain't going to be no fool. How about this one? Buy one, get one. We go, we go to like a, anywhere we go, kids at Wendy's or something like that. I want the Happy Meal. You ain't getting it. Let Grammy buy it. Daddy ain't. <laughs> you getting the one over here that comes with the free one because I got this. Is that okay to do that? Yes or no? We're just talking practically today. Now, if you're, and, and by the way, if you're well off today in the audience or on the internet listening, I bet you, you did this. Didn't you? Some of y'all looking at me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't think that people that have these days, guys, and you don't have it yet or you don't have a lot. Don't think that this isn't how a lot of them got there. Yes or no? Amen. Don't just, just don't, don't just dismiss what I'm saying today. Look at that thing right there. And I want one of them right now. Come on. Buying used. Now used can be a problem sometimes. You have to fix it. I get that. But you don't always, I'm just talking about how can I live with less. If you don't want to live with less, go ahead. Don't. Fix and repair stuff. I did a little boat. It's called a stump knocker. I love that little sucker. 14 foot. I've been working on it fixing, repairing. I'm not a good mechanic, but man, that thing's running. I took it out yesterday. Me, I was just going down the bay. Me, you know why I was happy? Not because I was on the water, because I fixed it. Me, it was fun. Less eating at home, which I'm horrible at. So don't think Gary does all these. I'm horrible at eating at home. And I justify it by getting out in the community and meeting a lot of people. I meet a lot of people. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. 
And I'll keep fighting my weight as I keep doing it. Amen. But I don't eat at home a lot, but I recommend it. Amen. Especially if you're dealing with your finances, you need some help. That Here's another one. Here, how, can you get, how can you live with less? Get fit. What's exercising and getting fit got to do with money? Because you're going to have so many medical bills that ain't even funny. All right. You're taking all the pills you take. Have you ever thought about taking a walk? Excuse me. Come on. Get fit, man. Come on exercise you want to live with less get out start doing you're gonna get sick you and you sit in the house and you just eating your groceries <laughs> biking get on a bike well i can't it'll fall over get a three-wheeler <laughs> come on you're hearing me today walking jogging moving anything this is, this is going to help you live with less because you're going to have less sickness. Come on. You have a lot of less stuff. Healthy living brings balance in your life. Less meds, less sickness, more energy, more work will get done, more quality time. How many feel like if you get up and exercise or walk in the morning, you've got more energy all throughout the rest of your day? Look at that. I'm just tired all the time. I can't believe it. I'm tired all the time. I guarantee it. You ain't doing much in the morning. Excuse me. Get up and start walking. Get up and start moving. I didn't make the human body. The body reacts like that. Just think about it. Less is better. It's the truth. You know why? Keep pushing me, buddy. Because we have so much, we become ungrateful and unthankful. That's me. Why do you think I say, thank God we live in America every Sunday? Because we're pathetic in this country. We have so much. I get so sick of the news, nonstop bashing the president. I'm going to tell you right now, nonstop bashing the president. Last time I checked, he's the president. We live in America. Last time I checked. I hate it. Hate it. Amen? Come on. If I said the things about President Obama and I didn't, they might have locked me up. It's crazy. It just promotes, the, it, 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 just, it just hurts the patriotism in our country and the love of country, and we just get so selfish. So at, right here at Fellowship Church, whether you like it or not, we're going to keep saying, thank God we live in America. We're going to keep beating that drum, beating that drum, that we're the most blessed country on the face of this earth. Amen? What, so we're going, to, we're going to keep doing that. Amen! Come on! Money and material things have become common to us. I was talking to a missionary. He leads the whole, he's in our church. He's the president of the whole mission thing. Are you here today, ma'am, or y'all gone? I think they've already gone. Runs this evangelism to forgotten peoples. And they come right here to our church. That's awesome. Got a bunch of missionaries. And I had dinner with them the other day. And the missionaries over there can live like on $60 a month. They can have churches and people can be saved for just a little bit of money. Isn't that awesome? We can't get by on $60 a day if we tried. Hardly. We overlook the many blessings because we've got so much. And then here's the worst thing. We think we did it. You hear me say? You ever get to the place where you think you made it and you did it? That's a pretty bad place to be. I always want to be a person that anything I have, any money I get. Here's what I do for every offering we get at Fellowship Church. Every offering we get. At, and I've taught Alex to do this. I've trained Alex. That's what I've been doing for years. He's our administrator, but he's so teachable. Amen? Alex is beautiful and loving and kind. He's so teachable. No matter what the amount of any offering we get here, we always thank God for it. And some, we've had some big offerings here, and we've had some offerings where we barely made it. But guess what? We made it every time. Amen? And I think it's because we're grateful. We're grateful. You give a dollar, you give $10, you give anything. I want you to know, as far as from our end, we're grateful for it. You hear me today? Come on. 
We think we deserve it. That's why we become unthankful, ungrateful. You would think the more and more stuff would equal more and more gratitude and appreciation, but it doesn't. It usually is not that way. We, we don't thank the Lord for it. So checking balance, how much is enough? How much is enough? And I got two big questions. And Roger, we got to quit because it's late. I knew this subject would be a long one for me. Number one, are you grateful? Check your balance today. Are you grateful for what you have? Do you pour mouth? I just don't think people in America ought to pour mouth. Yeah, but you don't understand how bad I got it. No, I understand how good you got it. Even when you got it bad, you got it good. Most of us, yes or no? Come on. So you should be grateful. Most people aren't. This is huge. Jesus met 10 lepers. I'll go through this quick, Raj. I'll just tell the story. He healed 10 lepers. Leprosy, their skin was being eaten alive. He healed 10, and only one of them turned around and said, thank you. That sounds like America. Come on. And Jesus said, when the one turned around, here was Jesus' question, where are the nine? Be grateful. Let your attitude be what? Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks. You know one thing I do, and I'm not putting myself up today. I'm not trying to. I pray every time I eat. My question is, why wouldn't I? I love to eat. I love to eat. I am so grateful when I get something. Yeah, amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Be grateful. Everything you have. Everything. Start giving thanks for everything. How about that? Yes or no? I don't care what it is. You got that car? Thank you, Lord. Put gas in it. Thank you, Lord. People are going to think you're crazy. You're better off than 95% of the world. Period. On every day. Don't be a scorekeeper. Don't be a scorekeeper. An ungrateful spirit comes when we look at what others have and what we don't have. Quit being a scorekeeper. Don't do that. Keeping scores is going to sideline your gratitude. Instead of checking what somebody else has and what I have, why don't you just don't worry about them and thank him for all you got? Be a praise giver. Praise you, Lord. Not a scorekeeper. Scorekeepers are sidelines. That's where a scorekeeper said, I played a lot of ball and they never end the game. Don't be a scorekeeper. Get in a game of what? Gratitude, baby. Second question today and we're done. Second one, and that is, are you giving? So are you grateful? Checking balance. How can I check my balance? Well, are you grateful? And number two, are you giving? Are you giving? Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him work. Work with your hands, the thing which is good that you might have what? To give to who? Him that's what? We work so we can give to others. That's so foreign to us today. No, we work so we can save it and so we can have it. That's not the purpose of work. Work is to give. You have to take care of your family, to be able to give to your family, take care of their needs. But so you can give to other people. So you can help other people. That's the purpose of our giving in church. Giving is motivated by the what? If you're not a giver... You're not being motivated by the Spirit. But it's not because He's not motivating you. It's because you're not listening. It's not His fault. It's His Word. If you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your brother has all against you, you leave your gift at that altar. And you go and be reconciled to that brother. And then you come and give your gift. God wants us to be right with people, but He, never, he wants us to, to give. He wants us to be motivated to give. Amen? Say Here's a something I've said for years again. Giving happens on purpose. Well, if I win the lottery, I'll give. Most people that win the lottery lose it all within the first couple of years. Isn't that crazy? How many would say if you won the lottery, you wouldn't lose it in two years? Few of you. We're different, aren't we? <laughs> you kidding me? 
Giving happens on purpose. Here's what the Bible says. Not Gary, but this I say, he that sows sparingly is going to reap sparingly. He that sows a lot bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. Every man according as he what? Purposes in his what? Down in your gut, your passion, where you really, you will to do it. Every man that purposes in his heart, so let him give, not how? Grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what? We said at fellowship, if you can't give what? Then what? If you're not giving on purpose, I want you to come and give on purpose. I want you to feel like we've got a great church. We're making a difference. Somebody's got to pay the lights. Amen. Somebody's got to help keep that yard beautiful that people can see when they come here. Guy the other day kneeling at the crosses. Doesn't come to our church, but he's out front kneeling at those crosses. We're making a difference. You hear me? Getting our word out. We want you to get a sticker today. They're free. The magnet's free. They're not free. You paid for them. The billboard. How many saw the new billboard we got on Placida? You paid for it. All the internet services. Getting us all out there for the community. On radio. On the internet today. We think it matters. Amen. Come on. Purpose to give. One of my famous quotes is going to be in my famous book one day. You will never become a giver on accident. It's not happening. I said that. You will never become a giver on accident. One day I just gave and now I'm a giver. No. You purpose to help people. Now sometimes they ask and they make you feel bad so you do it. You're not a giver. You just gave in. There's a difference being a giver. Amen? Say that quote with me one more time. Say it with me. You will never become a giver on accident. You've got a purpose in your heart that this is why you have blessed me, Lord, so that I can give. Amen? I look back over my life, and I've been in Inglewood for 35 years now. And I've given my life to serve the Lord, to serve this town, to do what I do. I didn't stay on accident. You understand? I still don't stay on accident. I have to keep telling myself, this is my town. You need to stay steady, Clark. You need to keep doing what you do. That's how you got to do in giving. You hear me, yes or no? I'm going to give. I'm going to give. It's the right thing to do. Say it's the right thing to do. It's the, it's the right thing to do. To give. It's a good thing. Don't be preoccupied with money or getting wealth. Don't be preoccupied with that. I think if you give and you're a good steward of your money and you use some of the principles today and many others that we could have talked about, you're probably going to get wealth in this country. If you work and work hard and save and, and have some good principles, you're probably going to get ahead in this country. All right? But don't be preoccupied with it. Know that money is not neutral, so be careful. Be careful. Realize that living with what? Less is what? How many would say, Pastor, I learned that. I mean, I've had so much, and, and I found that I'm happier with less. Can I just see some testimonies today? There you go. Some of us need to see that because we're still chasing it. Let your attitude be gratitude. And accept giving as a personal what? Amen. How, did you see how we put giving last in our message and it wasn't the, it wasn't the dog, it wasn't the tail wagging the dog today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. I'm done. That's all I can do. Boo. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a little balance today. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. 
Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.